killed her! Have you ever used a super simple audio denoise plugin that works this good? We're just at a park and pretty much not a whole lot of sounds going on here except for nature. So three, two, one. And this is with RTX voice on. And this is what it sounds like with me talking. Let's talk about it. Done. Roll that intro. Hey, what's going on, everybody? You're watching Too Long Didn't Read Filmmaker, where the answers comes first, the reasons come last, but we're constantly and always still learning. So you might be wondering, why do I have a fan running back there, creating all this noise, and my AC is actually on as well? Um, it's because if you don't know what RTX Voice is, well, it does something like this. So this is with RTX Voice on, and if it actually sounds really good to you, well, this is what it does. It literally is an AI that cancels out sounds in this room. So if it sounds good to you, let's go into some other filming situations to see how well it does. All right, so we're pretty much right over a highway over here. And uh, we'll see what happens in three, two, one. This is with RTX voice on. Um, see if it actually takes away this car sounds and if so, let's go to the next part. All right, so now we're a little bit away from the highway and we have uh, construction back there. So here we go, three, two, one. And this is what it sounds like with RTX voice on and see how well it does. Taking away a little bit of a wind breeze here today. But anyways, let's go to the next stop. All right, so now I have a fountain over there. And um, so three, two, one. And this is what it sounds like with RTX on. And let's see how well it does. And next we're gonna go to some place that's not full with noise. So let's go for that. All right, so now we're in a pretty tame area. Not a whole lot of noise, maybe just general nature sounds. So here we go, three, two, one. And this is with RTX on. So we'll see how well it does with just some regular sounds <laughs> of nature. A little bit of wind maybe you might be seeing, but let's go to our final sub place. Here we go. All right, so now we're just in a, we're just in a park and pretty much not a whole lot of sounds going on here except for nature. So three, two, one. And this is with RTX voice on. And this is what it sounds like with me talking. So um, hopefully these tests were helpful for you to see just what this can do in beta, by the way. This isn't, not even beta, it's like alpha. Really, really uh, early version of this um, ability. So hopefully NVIDIA actually continues development of this and eventually giving it to filmmakers like us in some sort of form. So NVIDIA, let's do it. Okay guys, and we're back. And right now I've turned off that fan in the background, but I do have my AC going and my computer is whirring, which usually I don't have the AC on. So, you know, it is making a bit of noise. So let's turn on RTX real quick. All right. So let's talk about this because the RTX voice is something that NVIDIA was working on. And with the whole world situation, basically they kind of pushed it ahead. This is like a very, very early versions, basically like alpha, I wouldn't even call it beta because there's still a lot that they need to work on. And the user interface is really nothing special. You basically tell it what's your microphone, what's your speaker, turn it on, and then you get one little knob to basically tell how much noise suppression or removal you actually want to do. And basically what they wanted was they wanted to create the software that runs in the background. So when you're doing your gaming, your Zoom, your Skype calls, you can basically eliminate a lot of this extra noise so that, you know, people can hear you and not get distracted. So this isn't necessarily a strictly filmmaking tool. In fact, I basically had to jump through a couple hoops. I used my Steam PC, I went out to Micro Center and I bought the cheapest GTX card that's known to work. It's the 1050 Ti, cost about $140, installed it into my Steam PC, then used my USB audio interface to take in the sounds from my laptop, which I basically just played the file, adjusted the volume through the mixer so that the Steam PC was getting the best signal possible. Then I recorded it with Audacity and then bringing it back into Final Cut Pro to give you these examples. So it's a lot. 
Now, if you have an RTX card, it's gonna work just fine. For GTX people, you can use it. It's not officially supported and you have to do a little hack where you have to remove a little bit of code. And basically what you have to do is if you have a GTX card from the 10 series, there's um, if you're using the 9 series and under, it might probably not work. So I would say you probably want the 10 series to kind of get this to work so far. But anyways, what you have to do is you have to run the setup. It's going to fail. When it fails, it's going to generate this file, which you can find right here. And basically what you have to do is you need to go into administration mode with notepad. So control shift escape, I believe is what it is. Then you're going to click this little box to enter into administration mode and then simply open up notepad. And then in notepad, you're going to open up that file that I listed right here, that link or that location. And once you open it up, when you look down, there's going to be a constraint section. And I don't know much about code, but basically you go from the, uh, the less than sign, and then you're going to erase all of this, save it. And then while you're still inside that specific area, there's a little setup that shows up and you're going to basically run it from there. Don't run it from the original desktop. If that's where you save the install file, you're going to run the setup there. When you do that, it's actually gonna go ahead and push through, and then you're gonna be able to install the whole thing. At that point in time, when you open up the interface, it's very simple. It's gonna ask you, what are you considering as your mic input? And what are you considering as your headphone input? output that doesn't actually matter it's the microphone that we want so basically i set it so that it's my usb audio interface and then in audacity for my microphone that's what i set it to and then therefore when i'm feeding a signal from my laptop which is my video file then it's going to go in there it's going to go through the process and therefore i can basically get an rtx voice so what why is this important because our uh, NVIDIA is only making this for gamers and streamers and people that are doing online video conferencing, but I'm sure they're thinking about it. They just don't have a team to kind of set it all up, but holy cow for filmmakers, once they actually get this thing into full, full version 1.0, it can only get better from here because this alpha beta version that's happening right now, it's already doing stuff and I'm very excited to see what it can actually do. Now I need to preface this. It's using deep learning AI kind of, um, it's, it's using that to determine what's considered a sound and what's considered your voice. Now, it's not doing this live. You're not sending back information to this AI. Basically, it's um, they're cre they're doing all that on their end. They're feeding the AI all this information, and then when they uh, put out a program, it just has these things already programmed into it. You're not actually sending information back and forth, so don't freak out about that. But Nvidia, and for us filmmakers, can you imagine a plugin like this? where it's native to Adobe, to Final Cut Pro 10, to uh, DaVinci Resolve, can you imagine that it's taking the leverage and power of your graphics card, specifically GTX at this point, unfortunately, uh, sorry, Radeon users like myself, but can you imagine that that's the plugin you put in? You don't do denoising anymore. You don't do anything. This program already has learned sounds and you can actually send sound samples over to them because the highway didn't really work because the cars were kind of going by. It wasn't consistent. And I'm pretty sure that they didn't feed the AI a highway sound. But when I was kind of out about in nature where there's a little bit of just ambient noise, some wind, it actually took that out just fine. And in terms of these fans, the fan back there didn't actually work as well because it has a continuous clank sound, but the air conditioning, it's taking it out just fine. So imagine that that's all you had to do in post. You just drop this AI on there. You might be able to tweak some more stuff instead of just level suppression. Um, maybe you can actually tell it what you want removed and then the AI, the program is just gonna do that. Um, the fact that it already seems to do quite well in an alpha build, I can only imagine what the beta build is gonna be like and then the uh, final version 1.0. And if they do that, we might be okay. Like in the summer, you can turn on your air conditioner and you don't have to worry about it because you run it through the plugin and you're gonna get basically a very nice clean sound. Uh, not only that, what happens if you're gonna do this on location? Like what if you can, um, 
just run this plugin somewhere, somehow. I don't know how you're gonna do this, but if you run the plugin and your recorder can then pick up the nice clean sound, that would be awesome. I don't think on location is the best way to go because you do want on location files to work with. And then when you come into post-production, you throw the plugin on there. And if it's not working for you, then you might need to go more traditional routes, what have you. But man, this would clean up dialogue. And if it gets really, really darn good, then you can almost say goodbye to ADR sessions, which I would love to never have to do an ADR session. I would rather get the performance on the day. So anyways, this has just been a little experiment of seeing how this works. Now I have to preface this again. RTX Voice, they're specifically gearing it towards RTX cards. NVIDIA has told some people that they don't know if they're going to continue allowing the GTX to actually continue working. And the reason is because when gamers are using it with GTX, cards, they're not optimized yet. So there's a huge performance hit for gamers specifically, but for us filmmakers, we don't care. We just want to be able to use it. So uh, it's hard for me to say, go ahead and just go buy a, a NVIDIA T50, T1050 Ti and that you would be safe because we don't know. I don't know. In fact, I'm probably just going to go ahead and buy the cheapest RTX card, which is the 1060, which retails right now for about $310. Because honestly, if they keep developing this thing, even though I have to run it through another system and process it, I think it's worth it. I think it's worth it. Obviously, it's going to be way more worth it when they actually make a standalone plugin, which please, NVIDIA, please do that. But for now, Knowing that this summer, when it gets super hot, I can just run the air conditioner, do my edit of this episode, and then just go ahead and play it through the system and then, you know, process it uh, might be worth it for me. So anyways, I would love to hear what you guys are thinking. Like now that you know RTX Voice exists, what are your thoughts on it? Let's have a conversation in the comments and let's tell NVIDIA, dude, figure out a way to allow us to use this thing as a standalone plugin and that it can just process an audio file. We don't have to feed it real time. Let's drop and drag, drag and drop a WAV file into it and hit process. It does its thing and then we can see if we like it or not. Uh, Cause again, I think this will be an amazing tool for us filmmakers. And yes, the AC has been running this whole time. And if it sounds great, there you go. So anyways, I will see you guys in the next one. N next one, like, subscribe and share. I'm so excited and leave your comments and questions down below. I'll get to them as fast as I can and I'll see you guys in the next one.